Sold out? Every copy. Tomorrow morning, Spider-Man, page one, with a decent picture this time. Move Conway to page seven. There's a problem with page seven. I make it page eight and give him 10% off. Okay. I make it 5%. That can't be done. Get out of here! <laughs> Are we start? I'm ready to start. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to Irritable Dad Syndrome. You pay for the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Here are your hosts, Mike and Darren. Hey, I'm Mike. And I'm Darren. Welcome to Irritable Dad Syndrome. We are in Season 3, Episode 2, and things are a little bit different this week. Mike. Yeah, uh, uh, Darren's feeling all vitty, um, <laughs> so we're we're doing it remotely. Right mm-hmm. now, he sounds terrible. That's not how I was going to go for I sound kind of like Barry White. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If I'm I hold this right up to my ear, I can almost hear a good podcast. Yeah, exactly. Like way off in the distance. That's yeah. exactly how it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't so, recorded a podcast since December 14th. So welcome back. I'm sorry I can't be in the same room with you. Uh, I have actually, I'm going to regret saying this. I've actually missed you. I'm a mess without you. I miss you so damn much. <laughs> I miss being with you. I miss being near you. I miss your laugh. (laughs) 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 I miss miss your scent. I miss your musk. When this all gets sorted out, I think you and me should get an apartment together. Take it easy, champ. Why don't you stop talking for a while? Maybe sit the next couple plays out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going to quit saying things when they crop up there in the old skull, huh? Well, I, I would miss me too. I mm-hmm. mean, I you sent some ideas and you mm-hmm. were sending things, and I didn't know what the hell you were talking about via text. And right. then I realized you were sending things that I put in the rundown, and I don't remember putting them in there. And it's <laughs> was, taken me a while. Yeah, they seem like they happened months ago. I know. Anyway, I want to tell all the listeners, uh, welcome back, uh, happy New Year. I know last week we said Happy New Year, but we recorded that episode on December fourteenth. This episode we're recording on January 4th, so this is actually our first episode uh, recorded in the new year. So Happy New Year to all our listeners, and I want you to stick with us on this podcast, because one, it's experimental. Uh, Two, we're going to be talking about all kinds of things. We've had illness in the family, deaths in our family, uh, a huge major career change for one of us. Um, uh, One of us uh, caught somebody yelling obscenities in public, and uh, uh, somebody got bitten on the penis. So stick with us. This is going to be a good episode. (laughs) But before we get into that, it's New Year. If you have not already, within the past couple of days, go to our website, irritabledadsyndrome.com. We've switched to a different provider. Here's a fun thing that I've learned. If you go with a provider that specializes in podcasts, they typically have things that people who listen to podcasts would like. So I've been going nuts over the past two, three days, just adding content, putting things on there. Uh, You guys can search by category. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, you know, um, so I've been categorizing the podcast ones where we talk a lot about music, some where we have reviews, right? podcasts where we have stories from our college days. And it's almost, it's almost, Darren, Yeah, like we go in this blindly on each episode and we have no idea what we're going to talk about and we come out the other end. And now that, now that uh, I've been categorizing those things and adding pictures, you can almost see a pattern. Like we we do a couple of music episodes, we do a review episode, then we just do a wild what what happened? In hey, episode. what happened? Hey, what happened? I you know, so I love it, and there's there's opportunities for you guys to connect with us. You could put your email address in there, get on a mailing list, which means I'm gonna start writing emails. To people. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on a Facebook style commenting system, so right. it, it integrates in with that, so you can log in with your Facebook and have discussions for whatever reason mm-hmm. about our episode. So it's just all kinds of cool stuff out there. So make sure you you check that out. It's a place. It connects all of our videos, all of our episodes, all of our transcripts. Everything that we do on the interwebs has been brought into one place. Right. Except for Patreon. You still got to go to Patreon. But there's a link to Patreon. L- let me stop you right there, Mike. It is yeah. very, very important that people go to Patreon. <laughs> it's so important. It is because, because like we need the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this thing I costs need, some scratch. I need the money for cough lozenges. 
<laughs> so if people could go to Patreon, that would be awesome. And so we wanted to get that out there in the forefront. We've noticed that we don't start telling people about the different ways to contact us and listen to the show until the very end when most people have either passed out or right. started doing the really hard drugs and can't remember that stuff anymore. <laughs> so we want to catch you in the beginning when you're first lighting the bowl up or yeah. opening the first beer yep. and you can still remember things, write it down, <laughs> go to irritable dad syndrome dot com, mm -hmm. do all your fancy stuff, and then come back and listen to the rest of the episode. Yeah, you'll be glad you did. You will. Yeah, I was listening to episode 71 today. I went to the park and I was trying to run around to try to lose some of this fatness that I have. Uh -huh. And I almost tripped and fell into the lake at the uh, Loch Ness Monster Park. <laughs> oh my Lord. I knew that we had lost it laughing, but I didn't realize not only how, how far we lost it, but then how many times it just kept coming back. Did you ever see the episode of South Park with Chef's Parrots? Yeah, and about there, three fifty. There, there we were, all alone at night. <laughs> and up from the ground came, it was a lot of monster. It was a lot of monster. Oh, Lord, he was angry. Damn right, I was angry. <laughs> we were so scared. Lord, I mother, I jumped up in the boat, and I said, Thomas, what on earth is that creature? Hey, wait, what, did, what did he say to you? He said, he said, he, I, need, he but, said I need about three fifty. <laughs> three dollars and fifty cents. Three fifty. He tricked me. <laughs> Damn it, woman, it don't matter we had for dinner last night. <laughs> we had taco salad last night. It was a lot of monsters. It's a <laughs> little girl scout came up and she said, would you like to buy some cookies? <laughs> I said, well, what type of cookies do you have? And she said, we have thin mint, thin crunchies. Raisin oatmeal. Raisin oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> I said, damn it, monster, you stop bugging my children now. We work for our money in this house, and we don't give money away. I didn't know you were going tree fitty. I should have seen that. I should have seen that coming. I need about tree fitty. God. <laughs> oh my God. Couldn't stop cracking oh. up. We had dogs out that day. <laughs> it don't matter what we ate, woman. <laughs> Say, would you crackers like to hear about the time we saw the Loch Ness monster? I gave him a dollar. <laughs> he tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Loch Ness monster. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. All right, stop. All right, we're back. Stop. We're back. We're back. <clears throat> Anyway, we're watching The Power of the Dog. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. I'm trying to recover. <laughs> said, Never you loved it. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I know. I know. That's a great I think episode. It, we've done, this is our 72nd episode. And I think it's a testament to the podcast and to you and I that we can do this many shows and then we have one that becomes more <laughs> fun than any other one that we've done. Oh, you know, my the, Lord. Because the episode that we repeated on uh, the, uh, New Year's Eve or whatever, uh, episode yeah. 36, Chewbacca in his pants, I yeah. thought that was the most fun we were ever going to have on a show. And a lot of the episodes <laughs> were really good since then. But we, uh, in my opinion, uh, we outdid ourselves. Uh, on, I was on, almost on scared. Fun. Yeah, I was almost scared to um, to to start an episode tonight because I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna top that. But we've <laughs> yeah. been saying that. We've been saying that for a year. Like we always say, this may be our last episode. It's gonna be the this worst one it, ever. Folks. It's the worst yeah. one ever. <laughs> <clears throat> and again, and for people who listen, that's the drinking game. Whenever Mike or I say this is our worst episode ever. Do a shot, and you will be hammered. <laughs> so you want to let everybody know why we're we sound like we're what? Why? Well, I mean, to everybody, we sound normal, but right now you sound like I'm talking to you through six feet of concrete. Yeah, I am at Studio B. I'm in my movie room. You are. I'm in Studio A, which is my movie room. You're in Studio yeah. B, which is your movie room, your basement. Yes. Uh, we're recording remotely tonight because uh, on. Uh, five days ago, my wife tested positive for the coronavirus. 
It has been okay. kicking her butt. I mm. mean, she has had she's had body aches, headaches, fever. She has been coughing. She had trouble breathing. Now, knock on wood, we are very lucky because she has not had to go to the hospital. She didn't need you know a vent. Uh, it wasn't that bad. It was bad, but it wasn't that bad. It was tolerable, and I know that we've been very lucky. Yeah. Um, because I, I have friends who had it worse. I have friends who have died from it. And so yeah. we're, we're very lucky. And I, and I, I really hate to complain about, you know, how bad this virus is because there are people who've had it way worse than us. But anyway, it's been kicking her butt. I went. Yeah. And this is, this is the Optimus Prime variant that she's got. Y- yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The Omaha, Nebraska variant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I went, uh, a few, we, this all happened after we came back from visiting family in Tennessee for Christmas. So we drove home on Wednesday and Libby sounded just fine. We get home, we're opening Christmas presents. And she says, Oh boy, I'm, I'm, uh, my throat's starting to hurt. And whatever her throat hurts, she can't hardly, she can't make out any words at all. She can't speak. It hurts to talk. Yeah. And I thought, Oh great. Here we go. She's gotten sick. I didn't think she's gotten COVID. I thought she's gotten sick because every time she gets sick, she gets like that. She can't talk. Her skin hurts and she has zero energy. Well, the next day her coughing was just off the charts and I thought, okay, we're taking her to the doctor to make sure because this is the world we live in. As soon as you sneeze, you need to go get a test to make sure that you don't have the COVID. So I took her, took her to the hospital and uh, sure enough, she tested positive for the coronavirus. So before we left, my son had a cough, Cameron, and we took him to the doctor to make sure. And he tested negative for strep, negative for flu, negative for COVID. We thought he's got the common cold. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, it's annoying, but at least he's, you know, not uh, uh, COVID. And yeah. uh, we came home and we thought, let's get him tested again. We went and took him. His doctor was convinced he had a sinus infection. He still tests negative for COVID. My oldest son, yeah, my oldest son, Jacob, I had to take him somewhere else to get him tested. And uh, this is, there's actually a funny part to the story here. (laughs) Yeah, because COVID's hilarious. Uh, I took him uh, through our pediatric care doctor and they sent me to a place where he can get tested and we pull up to the door and they walk out and they test you in your car. And um, I noticed that on the window, there was a a phone number. It says call 866-SWAB, S-W-A-B. And okay. I'm thinking, um, is this a time to get super creative? And hey, let's <laughs> find a catchy phone number so kids today will really enjoy calling and getting tested for COVID. <laughs> There's going to oh, be a pirate calling that to, to, to ask about swab in the deck. Swab. <laughs> 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 Oh, this you, is gonna yeah, because you yeah. normally you you lapse into coughing fits yeah. when you laugh, so you may die in this episode. Say, yeah, you, Just... you you can edit that out. But I was like, <laughs> you know, let, let's uh let's call one eight hundred A A H C H O O Ah Chu, and yeah. you can get tested to see if you have the common cold. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you can you told me you can't smell anything, but you can uh, taste. I can't smell. A thing. I was doing laundry last night. Before I went to bed, I put a load of towels and sheets uh, in, and um, I was getting ready to throw them in the dryer. And I really enjoy the smell of of fabric softener. And I've been yeah. trying so hard to get Downy fabric softener to be a sponsor of this podcast, and they won't call yeah. us back. Um, but I reached in and I got the stuff out of the washer, and I'm like, the the clothes don't smell clean at all. Actually, I, they don't even. I was like, I couldn't have forgotten to use fabric softener i know i use the fabric softener and i thought oh great oh great yeah. so i put everything in the dryer and then i went out into our our pantry and i opened up a jar of peanut butter i can't smell peanut butter at all but you can taste it oh yeah i can taste it which is crazy because the all it's the olfactory system they're yeah. combined and the nose is right yeah. above the tongue well you know where you, your nose is well yeah i i've seen it you, yeah. you see you have like a superpower <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you've got like you could walk through you could you could and I want you to do this. Okay. Because you're you're switching jobs. So this is your last Oh, you can't. You can't go to work. You can't do anything. I'm working remotely. 
Yeah, I yeah. was going to say get a subway sandwich or something and just go in the in the public bathroom and stand there and eat it while people are <laughs> crapping <laughs> and everything. <laughs> I'm just going to stand here in the middle of my own crap and eat a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but um, uh, so Libby tested positive. Cameron tested negative. Uh, I went and tested again this morning. Uh, I'm certain I'm going to test positive tomorrow because my cough is off the charts. My sneezing, my nose is running like Usain Bolt. And, uh, <laughs> um, and I can't smell. And my oldest yeah. son, he tested positive, but he has no symptoms at all. He had no fever, no cough, no sore throat, no. He hasn't sneezed in uh, since uh, uh, 1995. I don't yeah. know. So yeah. I'm hoping that he continues to be no symptoms. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that Libby uh, starts feeling better because God love her. She has me taking care of her, and she just got over having a uh, shoulder surgery. You know, yeah. she's still, I mean, she can move her arm around a lot. Um, but, and she's got, you know, her arm is sore from where she had the surgery, but her shoulder's feeling a lot better. And so she gets done with that and then jumps right into COVID. So it's just, it's the 2022 is starting out really, really fun. Yeah. We're only on day four yeah, of it. Yeah. Um, so this portion of our show is brought to you by Whoppers All Beef Footlong Hot Dogs. We here at Irritable Dad Syndrome would like to remind you that high-quality Whoppers merchandise is on sale at our website. Whoppers are without a doubt everyone's favorite hot dogs. And fellas, chicks love a guy who wears Whoppers t-shirts and sweatshirts. So what are you waiting for? Go to IrritableDadSyndrome.com now and buy some Whopper stuff today. Well, um, I wanted to say, you know, I've been going through all of this. And you and I have seen a lot of highs and lows over the past three or four weeks. I wanted to apologize because I'm very sorry to hear that your mother-in-law passed away. Oh, well, th yeah, thank you. That was and, a surprise. And well, and it's coincidental because she died on the 10th anniversary that my mother-in-law died. Yeah. So it's so, very yeah. bizarre that you and I now have that in common. <laughs> but no, but So for, yeah, it was yeah, this is mom. Yeah, she's a wonderful, wonderful lady, extremely just she's she was hilarious. Yeah. Uh even the the funeral uh her wishes, you know, we got on her computer and she's had this document that she's been updating for I think like 15 or 20 years of what to do for her funeral. Mm -hmm. It included things like a, a a song, a playlist. There were like 100 songs on there. Uh she wanted a streaker. Um, <laughs> Are you kidding? No, no, I'm not kidding. And we made it. We found a way. Uh, my brother-in-law, Jim, found a way to make that happen uh, through video. There was a, an amazing video that he put together with a lot of things that were very touching uh -huh. um, from her life. I would love to see that. some hilarious things. Yeah. yeah. There's, I'll, uh, I'll send you a link to it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, she was... Um, she has always been very supportive of me. Mm -hmm. You know, she's the type of lady that she would get into a laughing fit, kind of like how we did with the Loch Ness monster. Yeah, uh, she got into laughing fits very easy and and just and would lose it. I'm gonna miss her uh, quite a bit. But yeah, no, we had just moved her here. Uh, she had moved into an assisted living facility, uh, which I, know. I thought looked awesome. Um, I was ready to, I was like, ah, maybe retirement won't be that bad if I throw me in one of these puppies. Right. Because uh, I, I talked about it on one of our episodes. All they needed was Lord of the Rings. Uh, well, yeah, we library. talked about it like two episodes ago. I know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so she so just moved there. So we were, you know, making plans to, you know, uh, take her around Cincinnati and show her things. And so, yeah, uh, Bess has been doing well. She's been doing fine. Uh, but well, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, here we were driving to Tennessee and I get a text from Bess, and she says, hey, do you know any great jokes to tell at a funeral? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know why I'm getting this from Bess, but I instantly <laughs> said, well, you can't go wrong with, hey, what happened? <laughs> Let's start right out. Hey, what happened? <laughs> and so here, uh, luckily, Libby was driving at the time. Yeah. And I got on and I was looking up some and my favorite one was, you know, we put the fun in funeral. Um, <laughs> but what wh I want to know, what joke did your mother-in-law want to use that Bess said was too much and they couldn't use it? And then what joke did you use in play? So they have a yearly party called Glop. Uh -huh. I think I've told you about that before. Yes, you have. 
Yeah, and there's a talent show. There's like a kids' talent show, and there's an adult talent show as part of it. And Jim's dad would get up there and do like a comedy show uh, for his talent portion. And uh, mm-hmm. Bess's mom, Teresa, always thought it was hilarious and loved it. So as part of the funeral video, they had a joke that he told at one of these events. And, and you can see Teresa's reflection in the audience, and she's laughing herself silly at it. So. <laughs> I've got, a, I've got a joke, and this is a new joke. And I'm dedicating this joke to Teresa, because she's my best fan. The CIA has an opening for a new agent. After screening about a thousand applicants, they boil it down to the last three, two men and a woman. And so for the final test, they call the first man and hand him a revolver. They say, your wife is in that room, we want you to go in there and kill her. He takes the revolver, he thinks for a minute and says, well, I've been wanting to be an agent for a long time, but I'm not going to kill my wife for you and hands him the gun back. Okay, you're disqualified. Next man. They hand him the revolver. They say, your wife is in that room. We want you to go in there and kill her. So he goes in the room and comes back out a couple of minutes later, tears streaming down his face and all, says, all I've ever wanted to be from the time I was a little kid was an agent for the CIA, but I just can't do it. I just can't kill my wife for you. All right, you're disqualified. Then they call the woman hand of the revolver and say, your husband's in that room, we want you to go in there and kill him. So she goes in the room, you hear, bang, 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 bang. And a big commotion and crash, slam, bam, boom. The commotion goes on for a while and finally she comes out and wipes the sweat from her brow and says, that gun you gave me had blanks in it, had to beat him with the chair. <laughs> Never put a woman to the test. <laughs> there were there were so many things, and I think it was probably about a fifteen minute video. But there's so many things that did a really good job of showing, yeah, uh, her humor, her mm-hmm. heart, um, and you know, I think everybody there probably learned a little bit more about her and, and felt a, a a a loss. So yeah, well, one of my favorite episodes, favorite moments from this podcast was you telling the story of going to get her birthday cake at the giant <laughs> Eagle grocery store and, and all that you had to go through to get it. And yeah. so I, I hope she heard that story because I, I believe it's the funniest moment from our podcast. She has, she has heard some of some episodes of the pie or some uh, sections of the podcast. I can't yeah. remember if I played that for her. Right. Uh, she did hear one of, we had a bit where we had a lot of farting going on. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, when I was talking about farting in my office, how yeah. fun it is to just fart yeah. in your office. Yeah. Uh, I edited that, that episode and I think I put 14 <laughs> farts in that one. Yeah. This portion of Irritable Dad Syndrome is brought to you by the Rubik's Cube. Hi, I'm Dave Lay, and I'm telling you right now, chicks love a guy who can solve the Rubik's Cube. Available wherever cube-shaped puzzles and toys are sold. Now, back to the show. Uh, I had a colonoscopy. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. So, What, what did I, they find? Uh, <laughs> Your head? But, um, <laughs> I still don't have the results. I still, I'm, they were supposed to call, I'm supposed to call them like two weeks later and I keep calling and they're not there. I get voicemail saying, Hey, well, we'll call you back. It's not a big rush, not a big hurry. I, Where did you have it? Like behind a Joe's, Joe's colonoscopy emporium. Joe's discount colonoscopy. Yeah. I was complaining that I wasn't able to drive myself. So me, yeah. Bess and Charlie ended up going, Charlie, I'm, you know, yeah, he was in the waiting room. Turns out colonoscopies don't take that long. Once they get you jacked up on the drugs, they yeah. in there, wham, bam. Thank you, sir. And that's it. <laughs> I, I was out completely. So the well, last yeah. one I had, the, well, I mean, the last one I had, I was awake, you know, when I saw the camera, I saw, I saw, it was like a really, really odd version of 2001 Space Odyssey. I, like, <laughs> it was like the, my the ass old, looming. Remember that old <laughs> intro to Doctor Who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, listen. I didn't get, to, I was in there by myself. I didn't get to use any of my jokes. I, I, because the last episode, I was talking about all the fun dad jokes I had the California yeah. barking spider, yeah. step on a baby elephant, yeah. all that looked important, put that back, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. They wouldn't, they, Charlie was not allowed to go back there and Bess couldn't leave him alone. So I was just in the recovery room farting. All those dad jokes just wasted. I guess I could have taken advantage of that and just yeah. said them anyway. Could you just um, like ring, ring for the nurse, have her come in and then tell her? 
<laughs> and then when she goes away, I just couldn't. ring her again. So, so we did what they what we normally do, which leads uh, me into the next story. Is well, well uh, they, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, you have questions. You have no, you want me no. to expound? No, no. We got uh, a message from a listener. Oh, uh, our old fan Jim Timmerman wrote. He said, uh, "Dear irritable dad syndrome, oh my god, the next time you or Mike need a ride for a colonoscopy, please, please put it up <laughs> as a purchase on the website. I bet there oh. are fans of the show." That would pay to take him. I don't know if I like, want someone who would buy taking me to get my ass checked. I don't. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's no, that would be good. Raffle off taking me to a colonoscopy. Right. Or, There's or, two of us. Or me. Yeah. Or take yeah, us yeah. both. Next, yeah, hey, exactly. next time let's both have colonoscopies together. We'll live stream it on the podcast. <laughs> I think Pod- we should do that. Podcast. Anoscopy Palooza. Wait a minute. So they tell you at the end, you know, you can you can eat, try to do something light, you know, get your system back used to it. Don't do anything greasy, but if as long as you can handle it, you can eat pretty much whatever you want. Right. And so we went to the original pancake house, and uh-huh. the first thing that hit my stomach was a couple of pounds of bacon. I figured that's I'm gonna, you know, if we're gonna if we're gonna get back into this thing, let's get back into it right. Charlie got in trouble there because he was swinging his foot. Uh-huh. And hitting the um the you know the seat and you know like a booth Bing. your seat is Bing. the is Bing. Yeah, yeah that thing yeah and it was like well it was like thump 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 and all of a sudden this lady's head came from around the the booth uh huh and you don't normally expect to see that so I was curious and she said excuse me little man could you stop doing that and uh, he looked at her what the hell did you just say. And, you know, he was just in, in, you know, he's not a cage fighter yet. Yet. You know, he's he's very respectful. Let, let, did, she poke, was, did she poke the bear? Did she agitate him? Karate, I'll kick your ass. Hit to Tiananmen Square. Oh, yeah, mother... I'm gonna kick your ass, Terry. Yeah, yeah. She broke the rules. Now I pull out all your pubic hair. Yeah! <laughs> I would say a couple, give a couple of years, and he would have he would have lunged for. Her. Right. No, he, he he immediately stopped. I'm like, wow, uh, we need to have her come over whenever we uh, are asking uh-huh. him to stop doing things randomly. Just have a head pop around the thing. Uh, little man, could you stop doing that? When it reminds me, when we were in Tennessee, uh-huh. one of my mom's favorite movies is West Side Story. So we okay. took her to see the re-release, the reboot of West Side Story, directed by Steven Spielberg. And uh, mom went up to, I, I let everybody off uh, at the ticket up booth and then I parked the car. Mom bought all the tickets. And when I got up there, they couldn't get five uh, in a row. So there was four and then one person sit in front. So I choose to sit in front so that Libby okay. could sit with the kids. Anyway, I'm sitting next to a large group of people and they're all wearing Pittsburgh Steeler pajamas. Okay. To the movies. So I'm thinking, Jamming. I'm with my people. This is awesome. This yeah. is great. So I'm sitting there, and everything was going totally fine until like the last half hour of the movie. The girl sitting next to me starts jacking with her electric seat. <laughs> <laughs> up, down, all the way up, all the way down. Up, 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 da, 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 up down, up, down. <sighs> I was about to lose my freaking mind. Absolutely. <laughs> and I was looking at her going, <coughs> and then, <coughs> you know, one thing I've learned is you don't mess with a whole row of people. <laughs> no, and, no. And another lesson I learned from it's, the movie, especially not is, all in uniform. Like, right. That. Is, um, I like, I can't get up and move because I know no one's going to move with me. Yeah. So the remainder of the movie was, <laughs> and I'm I'm literally staring at her, just yeah. staring, hoping that she can tell she's not getting it, is she? Right, and I, but I should have done what the lady at the pancake house said. Hey, pardon me, little lady, can you <laughs> stop doing that? Do you mind? Yeah, and Do you I mind? felt like yeah. I felt like Steve Martin in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, great, you broke the seat. Broke the seat. You broke the seat. I don't believe it. 
It wasn't broken when I got out. You messed around with it till you broke it. How can you break a car seat? It's impossible. What do you mean it's impossible? You want to drive? No, I don't. Why did you do this? Jeez. Look, I'm not going to be held responsible for faulty engineering. Oh, well, this is comfortable. This is really comfortable. <laughs> I, I, so you've been having really weird stress dreams. What I have been, I have not slept well for the past four or five nights. Um, okay. uh, uh, Libby and I have been quarantined, isolated. She's been sleeping in the bedroom, and I've been sleeping down here in the movie room. And I love the couch down here. I, you know what? There's that whole thing about you know, guys going to get in trouble. He's better sleep on the couch. I like sleeping on the couch. I've <laughs> always liked sleeping on the couch. So I've been sleeping down here. But I have not been able to fall asleep because I've been having these weird uh, anxiety uh, dreams where you can't fall asleep unless you complete a task. So the first night, the no. dream I was having, I had a, a box and someone would come up and ask, what's in the box? And I'd say, it's a uniform. They would ask, yeah. how much is the box? Or Then they would ask, how much is the uniform? And I'd say, $6. They'd pay me. I hand them the box. Then someone else comes up. Hey, what's in the box? It's a uniform. How much is the uniform? Six dollars. Okay. Pays me the six dollars. Then they go on. A third person. What's in the box? It's a uniform. <laughs> How much is the uniform? Six dollars. Okay. They pay me. They go on. And this goes on over and over and over. And I oh would my. wake No, I would wake up and I'm like, why am I selling uniforms? Why? <laughs> Just why for are they six in a box? Dollars too. You can why are they six? Why are they six dollars? That's a stupid low price for a uniform. It yeah. doesn't. None of it makes any sense. And I would get up. I would go get something to drink. I'd use the bathroom. I'd get a yeah. snack. I would turn on TV for a little bit to try to clear my mind. Whatever. I would wake up, or I would go back to <laughs> sleep. And people, would, hey, what's in the box? Well, it's a uniform. How oh much is God. the uniform? Six dollars. Yeah. Okay. The yeah, the fever dream. That is a nightmare. So. I, I know that I am getting sick when I am unable to sleep mm -hmm. because that's what I have. And I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I, there's a, uh, and I'm not digressing too much. I'll bring it back around, but you you know, the band fish. Yeah. I've uh, seen their fish. album. Yeah. The, their, the album hoist down with disease. Okay. It's basically they, the road or whoever the guy, I, I'm not a huge fan, but the guy who writes Anastasio. Their stuff, Old Trey wrote that when he was sick, and it was just basically a fever dream music thing of uh -huh. what was running through his head. He was describing basically what you're describing now. So I have incorporated that into my knowledge, and now I know when I'm getting sick because I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. And then that song starts repeating over and over and over. It'll be three in the morning, and I'm just laying there going, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. That's every fish song. Yeah. <laughs> so But I that is the worst that is worse than any of the I mean I, I almost would rather, I, I hate headaches and things like that, but at least it's like, you know, it's there, it's going to pass eventually mm -hmm. and get on with your life. But that thing is just, you, you wonder if you're starting to lose your mind, if you're starting yeah. to go insane. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 it really is crazy. And then I, I don't remember what the dream was the next night, uh, but the dream the third night invo involved um, uh, brownies and okay. giving people brownies. Now, when I worked at the grocery store, when I first started there, uh, I remember I was brand new and, and I couldn't go to sleep that night because I had to finish bagging groceries before I could go to bed. And the conveyor <laughs> belt, I swear to God, in the dream, the conveyor belt was like a mile and a half long. Just, oh my just, God. just can after can after can, and then the milk, and you can't put the cold stuff with the with the soap, and you got to put the canned goods together and put the bread on top and the eggs on top and put that in the thing. And and, and I'm just I was bagging groceries all night long. Every time I'd fall asleep, I'd start bagging groceries. I'd wake up and I'd realize I'm home. Uh, I'm not at Winn Dixie. I can go back to sleep, and I'd go back to sleep, and then the conveyor belt would start again. And I don't know why I have those. Um, uh, but I mean, I don't know, maybe it's because I've got a new job coming up. I don't know, yeah. but yeah. Well, yeah, let's talk about your new job. What's up? 
oh yeah, um, I got a new job. Antenna TV <laughs> is a channel that airs classic TV shows. Three's Company, Johnny Carson. People can't get enough of these old TV shows. And yeah. Rewind TV is a new show that they just uh, premiered uh, last year. And it is 80s television shows. The people at WLWT were very, very good to me the 15 years that I was there. And uh, I have so many friends there and I love so many people there. And uh, it was one of the hardest decisions I've ever made, but I, I couldn't turn down this opportunity. And this is going to be a fun job. Yeah. I'm going to be writing and editing promos mm. for classic television shows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of people may not have realized this. I mean, we're, what is this episode 72? Uh-huh. You write the commercials for this show. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I do. <laughs> I am the head writer for Irritable Dad Syndrome. <laughs> yeah, I, <clears throat> well, and I, I didn't know if I wanted. Man. Yeah, I didn't know if I wanted to mention that or not. Well, then again, because people are starting to give all the credit to Dave Lay. Um, yeah. But yes, I, you are the executive producer of this show and co-host. I am the head yeah. writer and co-host. Those are our titles. Hi, I'm Dave Lay, and it's time again for Dave's Comedy Corner. I think the word trampoline sounds like a fuel for slutty girls. Get it? Tramp? Oline? This has been Dave's Comedy Corner. <laughs> ah, waka, waka, waka. <laughs> Spider Man. Yeah. No way home. Oh my can't God. Get, can't get there from here. No, you can't. So, you yeah, so. So I, I want to I want to jump in real quick. Well, I, w- um, I wanted to say first: do we do we spoil it, or do we assume that enough people have seen it by now? We're, we're, here's what we're going to do. I if think you, we're past the point you, of spoiling it for yeah, anybody. We're past the point of spoiling. And here's the deal: if you okay. if you don't want Spider Man spoiled, then uh, let me think about this. I'm going to put a um, a time uh time stamp in the show notes yeah so people can click there if mm-hmm. they want to skip the spider-man discussion yeah don't listen to it until you've until you've seen the movie i didn't know if andrew had seen any of the other spider-mans because sometimes you know it goes to his friend's houses or whatever and they watch things i knew charlie hatton right uh so i leaned over and uh by the way if you're listening now and you, you don't want anything spoiled now's the time to quit listening yep and here go we go stamp. So I leaned over and I was like, you guys know that all the Spider-Men show up in this thing, don't you? And and Andrew, both Andrew and Charlie are like, yeah, yeah. And then I thought, A, how the hell do they know that? And B, they have no concept of the other Spider-Men because the first Spider-Man movie came out in like 2000, what was it, 2003, 2004? Yeah. Uh, Andrew was born in 2007, so he hasn't, he, you know. Right. I, and, and we watched the first one, but he was like one. Mm-hmm. It was one of those situations where it's like, I'm watching Andrew and I want to watch Spider-Man. So he's going to sit here and watch it with me. He doesn't remember any of that stuff. But anyway, we sat and we watched the movie. And uh, well, I've, I've read this later that Spider-Man is the most profitable superhero in movies, in movie history. That's a fact that I learned yesterday. He's been he's the most profitable superhero in cinema. And huh. after seeing No Way Home, I can see I I see that. I don't know I for some movie. reason I thought Batman was, but that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because, because well, because most of the Batman movies really sucked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the Tobey Maguire trilogy, and I, you know, we started. We've been going through the trilogy back through it. I think the third one. I was poo pooing the third one on uh, text with you and 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 the boys. Uh, a few days ago, but I, we're watching the third one again, and it's not as bad as I remember it being. I remember it. I'm it not wasn't. liking it in the, the theater. The dancing scene, and yeah. then uh, the the Tobey Maguire dancing uh, ruined it for a lot of people. But if you look yeah. past that, yeah, it, yeah, it's not that bad. And then uh, I like, I really like the Andrew Garfield Spider Man. I think everybody likes the Tom Holland Spider Man. So yeah. you know, in that yeah. light, I mean, you can see you know three relatively hit you know trilogies plus yeah uh, you know the dude showing up in the Avengers and that whole Marvel twenty three movie extravaganza. I can yeah. see how that would be the most profitable. But I'm but yeah, I'm gonna, pretty good movie. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right now. Um, uh, and uh, again, spoiler alert: I was blown away with the chemistry the three of them had. Okay. 
Let me ask you Honestly, this. because, I mean, the, I didn't see any ego. No. I didn't see. I just saw three guys having so much flipping fun. Yeah. Doing did you, this movie. Okay. Did you shed tear at the, uh, because there was an entrance for each yeah. Spider-Man. Did you, did you shed tear when Toby I showed did. up? I did. I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And well, I, well, when, when Andrew Garfield walked in, there oh, was yeah. a, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then when Toby walks in, yeah, everyone, cause, cause we were already like, oh man, we can't handle it anymore. And it was yeah. so exciting for Toby. Yeah. It was so good seeing Toby McGuire. It was. On screen again. I, maybe it's because I've been watching Lord of the Rings so much. I half expected him to pull out the One Ring and throw it into into the Mount Doom. He looks uh-huh. so much like um, I was Elijah. Say, you, you know that was Elijah Wood. I, right? I know, but okay. something I I get them okay. mixed up. Like when there's close ups of Tobey Maguire, I think, oh, what did Gollum's going to bite your finger off? I, I was about to say, please, please tell me that that this because this is a problem. Because <laughs> you know, in my movie room, I'm looking at Elijah Wood right now. Yeah. And God, that does look like Tobey Maguire. It, he does. It does. Yeah. But Spider-Man was amazing. And um, I own... The only Spider-Man movie I own is the first Tobey Maguire one. Yeah. Um, I've seen them all. I really enjoyed Andrew Garfield in the Amazing Spider-Man series. I did. And, I, uh, yeah. and I love Tom Holland. I totally love Tom Holland. But that's since none of them are on Disney+, Plus. that's made me want to go and buy the buy all the movies and then just gorge and watch them again. Yeah. We ended up, uh, I mean, we had one and two already. Um, we ended up buying the third digitally last night mm-hmm. because Charlie was determined to watch it. Uh, I only saw amazing Spider-Man on planes, but I, I can mm-hmm. I, like the, I saw the first one on a plane and the second yeah. one, uh, the trip ended before I got all the way through it. And I never did go back. So I've only seen half of the second amazing Spider-Man. Well, uh, 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 Spider-Man say, wins. Yeah. Yeah. Spider-Man yeah. wins. That's what yeah. happened in that movie. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a shocker to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I'm a nerd. Yeah. I'm a dork. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I read comic books when I was a kid, but I read weird comic books. Like I, I read the Bugs Bunny comic books. Okay. And I don't, I don't even know if people knew that there were Bugs Bunny comic sure books. Sure there were. And Daffy I, Duck and I used to have a couple. I used to have some Scrooge McDuck comics. Okay. There, I did Scrooge McDuck too. Uh-huh. Uh, but the only superhero comic that I read was Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. So I was pretty good about reading all those. And I, you know, I thought, you know, someday these things are going to be worth a lot of money. So I dutifully just threw them away or peed on them or threw them out the window or whatever. They're all gone. I don't have any more of them. I know some of them. I had. The, I remember I had the death of the Green Goblin uh-huh. um, issue. It was a big deal. Uh, I have no idea where that is. I'm sure that's worth a ton of money. It's collecting dust somewhere in some basement. Uh, well, somewhere. it's only worth money if you didn't read it, if you never opened it, if you didn't take it out of the thing. So if you accidentally peed on it and got Dorito dust on it? Then yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I thought that would make it worth more. Yeah, if anyway, you farted on it after your colonoscopy. Yeah. But my point is, is that of the Spider-Men, I always thought that Andrew Garfield was the closest to the guy in the comics, the Spider-Man in the comics. Because if you read the comics, yeah. he was constantly wisecracking. Yeah. And and Tobey Maguire does, but Tobey Maguire is almost like a wholesome kind of wisecracking. Mm-hmm. He's, he's going, woo all you know, he's going to the thing, and he's like, "Watch out, I'm going to get you." That type of thing. Garfield is flat out just like owning these guys, left and right, yeah. as he's as he's destroying them. You know, and it's kind of like that. Dude... It's kind of like that argument that people have with Batman. You know, d- d- who played the better Batman and who played the better um, um, oh, Bruce Wayne? Bruce Wayne. God, I almost said yeah. Adam West. Yeah, you know, because a lot of people said that Michael Keaton played a better Bruce Wayne than he did Batman, and then. It's like it's back and forth or whatever. And yeah, yeah. A, a lot of people think Andrew Garfield was a better Spider-Man, but Tobey Maguire was a better Peter Parker. And so I'm like, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, I agree with I, I think yeah. I can agree with that. Yeah, we're, we're and, really and, we're really deep diving and talking about the tough issues on this episode tonight. <laughs> well, and then Tom Holland is there. I mean, after after um, Avengers and the Tony Stark hug. Yes. Um, that's cemented Tom Holland into Spider-Man history there. Yes. Um, you know. Tom Holland's the man. I mean, you know. Yeah. After seeing him in Captain America Civil War, I mean, he premiered in Captain America Civil War. It's like, okay, I'm <laughs> well, I'm 13 years old, and you're going to yeah. put me on, on Team uh, Iron Man. 
Um, yeah. With all of these already established mega superpowers, except for Black Panther, of course. Yeah. Okay. And he comes on and he flipping kills it. And, and well, I mean, I know you're not a gamer, but I'm a, I'm a huge gamer and a big game series on the Sony game series is Uncharted. Mm-hmm. He's going to play Nathan Drake in Uncharted. And there was a lot of outcry. Oh, he can't be Nathan Drake. Uh, but then they had a trailer. I don't know if they had the trailer uh, when you saw Spider-Man, but in our viewing of it, there was a trailer for Uncharted with Tom Holland. And it looks like it's going to be pretty badass. It's basically an Indiana Jones character. Oh, yeah, where he falls out of the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Where he falls out of the plane. <laughs> I, I sound like that guy on The Simpsons. Gosh, Mr. Simpson, I don't know what's going to happen next. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, it's just like that guy on The Simpsons. Yeah. So you, you can edit that out, Mike. I'll, I'll, I'll edit that yeah. out. Um, um, so, uh, so two other things I want to talk about in the Spider-Man movie okay. is I'm the only one that literally and audibly lost his shit in the theater when Daredevil showed up right. because I am a huge, I love Daredevil on the, on the Netflix. And when that, when the act, the actor from that, because I've always, I, it, it got stopped or I don't know if it got canceled or they just quit making it or they, I, apparently they decided they were going to bring him into the MCU. Right. And started working on that and they're like, okay, screw the series. Mm-hmm. But that also, now that opens the door for um, the Punisher, John Bernthal, Bernthal to come in as the Punisher. That opens up that whole window there. But right. I can, I can tell you, and I've said it before on the podcast, and I know I have because I just listened to a couple of the recent episodes. So I don't want to sound like a broken record, but if you people have not seen Daredevil on Netflix, you owe it to yourself to watch at least the first few episodes. It is very good. Yeah, I need to go and watch it because I have not watched Daredevil. Yeah. Yeah. So I will uh, because I was uh, I was just so stupid impressed with, with <laughs> yeah, Spider-Man. It's, it's good. Oh, yeah, and have you, wa- good. have you watched Hawkeye? I have not. Okay, because there's there's a character from um boy, okay, I'll spell, Kingpin. Kingpin is Kingpin. in Hawkeye. Yeah, is it is it? Uh, oh, is it is it the guy from uh, Full Metal Jacket? Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. yeah. Okay, he's Kingpin and Daredevil. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh boy, they're bringing them all together. This is. I, I thought. Infinity War and Endgame were going to be the most actors they would ever have in the thing. They're they're no, going to. I think they're going to. We may be in the next uh, Marvel movie for all we know. Oh, God. you and I. <laughs> How cool would that be? <laughs> and then everyone is like, "Oh my God, there's irritable dad syndrome." <laughs> well, you know, did you saw Free Guy right with uh, Ryan I, Reynolds? Yeah, I loved it. The they brought all the YouTubers in. I, mm-hmm. it, it, could, it would be like Steve Carell or or one of those guys doing a podcasting movie. And then we show up as like a little thing like, hey, we're two bald fat guys. Waka, waka, waka. Hey. What we'll happened? Hey. Yeah, I'm <laughs> down. I'm, I'm going to say it right now. I will clear my calendar. I will. I will tell Just my give boss. Me a chance to, tell my yep. boss in Chicago, suck it. I'm going to do this movie. <laughs> yeah. Just give me a chance to say I need about three fifty, and I'll, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Anything we need to talk about is uh, so de aging. Okay, mm-hmm. the first time that I saw de aging, the first two times I can't remember which one affected me the most was uh, Robert Downey Jr. in uh-huh. uh, Civil War. Civil War, yeah, yeah, uh, and that one affected me because I remember Robert Downey Jr. at, at that age. Yeah, that you know was what the, I mean. Like I remember the, seeing, like like less than zero. That yeah, was Air America. That was that mm-hmm. Robert, Robert Downey Jr. and it looked just like him. And then weird the other science. One, yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, I loved him in Weird Science. <clears throat> he was such an. Uh, he is. Yeah. And then uh, Kurt Russell uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy two. Uh huh. When they go back in the day, and I'm like, Good God, that's that's him. That's uh, mm-hmm. that's Jack whatever from. Uh, uh, was well, it what the hell is that? Thunderbolt China. and Lightfoot. Was that the movie he made with <laughs> Jeff Bridges? No, uh, Big Big Trouble in Little China. That's all yeah, I yeah, kept yeah. thinking. Is Big Trouble in Little China. Uh huh. When some wild-eyed eight-foot tall maniac grabs your neck, taps the back of your favorite head up against a barroom wall, and he looks at crooked in the eye, and he asks you if you've paid your dues. Well, you just stare that big sucker right back in the eye, and you remember what old Jack Burton always says at a time like that. Have you paid your dues, Jack? Yes, sir, the check is in the mail. But when I saw the... the Tango the thing and is, Cash. Is that, 
Yeah. yeah. So you look at Robert Downey Jr., you can tell when he's aged and when he's de-aged. You can tell the same thing with Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. But Willem Dafoe, I still don't know if they did anything to him. I don't think they did. <laughs> I don't know if they... Because we just watched the first Spider-Man again like a few days ago. Uh -huh. And I'm like, he... I know the actor doesn't look the same because Willem Dafoe is also in the first John Wick movie and he looks old in John Wick, oldish. Um, so I know the actor has aged, right? but he doesn't, it doesn't look like they did much to him. He's just got one of those faces. It's like, it's like, um, oh, who's the guy who's Ant-Man that never ages? Who doesn't, Paul doesn't change. Rudd. Paul Rudd. Yeah. Uh, Sexiest man alive. Him, uh, Gary Oldman, for a long time, Gary Oldman did not age. And then all of a sudden, he just all, he became like 70 overnight. I right. don't know what happened to well, him. Well, you know, and then there's <clears throat> and then there's people like Steve Martin who have looked like they're 60 since they were 30. Yeah, he had gray hair when he was like five years old. Yeah, but he looked like a very good, very fit 60 yeah. years old when he was 30. <laughs> I got him and Phil Donahue mixed up a lot when I was a kid. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 And my neighbor, my neighbor kind of looked like Phil Donahue. Okay, <laughs> I was I was a very confused child growing up. <laughs> but anyway, uh, go see Spider Man if you haven't seen it. Uh, well, then what the hell did you just do? You just listen to all the spoilers and everything yeah. about it. Yeah, you're you're uh, a freaking moron if you don't go see Spider Man. They brought back all the villains, Doc Ock. Mm -hmm. I kept looking at his eyebrows. I, I was like, does his eyebrows really look like that in Spider Man yep. Two? Yeah. Ernest goes to camp. They brought him back. Yes, they did. And the, uh, the, and the marshmallow, yeah, that yeah. attacked New York. He was he's back. Chewbacca, and, uh, yeah. Jamie Fox. I did not know that that was Jamie Fox. I mean, yeah. I only saw part of uh, Amazing Spider Man too, but that was Jamie Fox. But I'll, let me let me tell you what my favorite part of Spider Man was was when uh, Spider Man was standing over, over the bridge, and yeah. up from the water came uh, a sixty foot uh, uh, creature from the Paleozoic era. It was the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I, I need about tree fitting. I need about tree fitting. <clears throat> he tricked me. A giant oh. crustacean oh. from the Paleozoic, from the Paleozoic era. era. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's so scary. Well, of course he gave you three fitting. <laughs> you keep giving him money, he's going to come back. <laughs> oh, my God. I gave him a dollar. <laughs> he tricked me. He gave him a dollar. Yeah. I thought he'd go away if I gave him a dollar. It's time for this important public announcement. Turn off your damn Christmas lights. This has been an important public service announcement. How many times do your kids come up to you with weird, random facts? Oh, my Lord. Because we were at um, dinner, and this uh -huh. was a week or two ago, when Jacob said, you know, Dad, there's a phobia that a duck is watching you. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, what? He goes, yeah, there's a random weird irrational phobia that a duck is watching you i didn't believe him so we said hey alexa is there a yeah. fear that a goose or a duck is watching you and sure as <laughs> there is and then we started and this is fun if you're ever bored you and your family can hey alexa what's the fear of doorknobs and she will tell yeah. you hey alexa what's the fear of toilet paper and she will tell you alexa yeah. what's the fear of being chased by a robot and she will tell you and we yeah, had yeah. One of the best nights of our life exploring weird, jacked up phobias. Yeah, so we we don't have the um, Alexa, but we've got the Google lady. Mm, and she'll uh, tell you the who, same I, thing. And I've mentioned before we call our dog Booba. Booba. And we'll we'll yell Hey Booba and Hey Hey Google is what you say to get the, wake the Google lady up. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while I'm like Hey Booba, I love my Booba. And then all of a sudden this random disembodied voice will boom through the house. Oh, I love you too. Nice. And scares the urine out yeah. of me. Uh, but yeah, we'll um, the Google lady has caused and ended so many arguments at the dinner table. It's time now for the Target story of the week. I I I was with Charlie. I love Target. Okay. Yeah, I do too. Sometimes I go to Target just to walk around and look at all the pretty stuff. Yeah. We were in the uh, the Target over here by us. I, I want to make sure that the people in England understand exactly which right Target we're in Slovakia. About. Yeah. Yeah. The one near us here in Bridgewater Falls, and we're over back in the uh, electronics. 
And the reason we're there, I'm trying to get Charlie to point out what he may want. You know, we're still a few days away from Christmas. Right. And I'm also trying to get him to pick something out for Andrew and for Bess. Uh, uh, and, and so we're, we weren't there. We went to a few different places. We're in Target. And I just, in the background, I hear, thing. You know, and I'm I'm like, you don't normally hear that. Okay, okay um, so for the people, um, I'm the only one who's going to hear what Mike is saying. <clears throat> the 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 person in Target was saying what's commonly referred to as the f bomb. It it rhymes with duck. Yes. Okay. Uh, so anyway, yeah, he's over there, and then it it stops, and it's it's one of those like it stopped right when me and Charlie. So I look at Charlie, and he's getting the half smile that a kid nice. eight years old having just heard naughty words, mm-hmm. it, it, you know that smile that he gets. And I just said somebody is using some some potty language, and he said yeah, and they're using bad words too. <laughs> and, and so we're looking around. And we don't see anything. We just see a guy that is kneeling in front of a TV with a somewhat distraught woman standing next to him. Uh huh. So we go back to looking at the movies, and then I see her, <laughs> just fuck it. You know, I look over, and now he's he's continuing to do it, and he's gesturing towards the TV, and he's saying it's unclear as to whether he's upset with something about the TV or if he's actively trying to get the TV to copulate with something else. Mm-hmm. Like he's saying to the TV... To, to copulate? The, yeah, copulate. This other thing. Okay. I want this TV to mate with... I don't know what a TV would mate with. Right, like, right. I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't understand the physics of that relationship. But then... He's trying the, to breed the, an HD TV with an SD TV yeah. to get a yeah. SH. D T V a sh T V. So he but he just keeps God, yelling. That was stupid. Uh, he keeps yelling the F word. Mm-hmm. And now I'm starting to just kind of stare over in that direction, waiting for them to look up. And I'm trying to I'm you know, I've gotten to the age where if somebody asked me if I had a problem, I'm more than likely gonna say, Yeah, I think I got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I think I'm ready for that confrontation. Yeah, I would appreciate it if you'd stop saying (laughs) in front of my kid. Oh. (laughs) And the woman next to him, I'm thinking there's no way. At first I thought maybe that's his sister, maybe that's his friend. Uh, I'm I'm thinking a friend would have walked away at this point. I think a sister would have smacked him at the back of the head. I can only assume that this is his wife or girlfriend. Yeah. Because she starts to plead with him. Can't hear exactly what she's saying. Something I just hear. Uh Uh-huh. And then I hear him say, yeah, fuck them. Fuck them all. I don't give a fuck. And, and she says, but you're being really loud. I remember I heard that. And he's like, yeah, fuck them. They can just, they can just hear me be loud. Fuck them all. And fuck this TV. And fuck it. And fuck you. And, fuck. and I'm just staring. Now, I, now at this point, I'm full facing and staring. Uh-huh. And Charlie is standing with his eyes wide and his mouth. in. A, he's never seen another human say that word that many times. I mean, we have let him watch Plain Strange and Automobiles. Uh-huh. We've gone beyond. It's gone beyond Steve Martin and the rent-a-car lady. We're into unheard levels of the F word. Mm-hmm. And finally, he just stood up and he said, well, f- and he walked away. What so was- naturally, mm-hmm. I go over to the TV. I want to see what's yeah. wrong with the TV. It was just that they, it, it looked like they brought the TV down from, you know what I'm talking about, where the TVs are. Uh-huh. It looks like they brought them down from the shelf, mm-hmm. set it on the floor, and began to just cuss at it, and then eventually walked away. I still don't know what happened, but I know that he basically locked me into a two- to three-minute conversation with Charlie about how inappropriate it was for him to stand there uh-huh. and say that word, but also how kind of funny it was. I mean, we could you had to admit. Yeah. I mean, we were both kind of giggling about it, but good God. That's crazy. You run into a situation where somebody just obviously has no social awareness of what they're doing and how they're appearing in public. Like, good God. Well, I mean, I've told you before the Target story uh, from uh, months ago where I was, oh, I overheard a woman on the phone and she kept threatening to kill this person. She was yeah. like, I'll kill him. I'll kill him. And she says, I'll may, I may be in jail, but he'll be in hell. I'll kill him. <laughs> I will kill him. And she is not, uh, uh, she does not care whatsoever. That 
No. Anybody else is within ear range of her conversation. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, good times. <laughs> this portion of Irritable Dad Syndrome is brought to you by Diff Liquid Concentrated Wallpaper Stripper. With its unique enzyme action, Diff dissolves old paste and cuts wallpaper removal time in half. Last week, me and my buddy Frank were stripping some wallpaper at his ex-wife's house. Boy, is she a bitch. The whole time we were there, she was nagging about something. I don't know why he married her in the first place. I mean, she's hot, but she's not that hot. And why was he the one left remodeling her house? Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, let me tell you why I'm glad we used Diff. We got in and out of there in no time and headed right to the bar. So run down to your local hardware store and buy a couple of bottles of Diff. And tell them you heard about it on Irritable Dad Syndrome. It's time now for the Kroger Story of the Week. When I was in Tennessee, my brother-in-law and I were out together, and we went to Kroger. We had rented a condo, uh, whereas uh, me and Libby and the boys, and then Eddie and his wife Gina and their son Ryan, and my sister-in-law Peggy, we were all staying in the same condo. So Eddie and I went out to get groceries, and we're at Kroger. And we're walking up, and it's a completely unfamiliar Kroger. All the aisles are in different places. There's no crowbar at this. Oh, my Kroger. God. I know. I'm like, what type of savages are you? Where, where do you publicly drink at this Kroger? And well, I, that's that's the, the worst part is is when, like you said, you go to an unfamiliar Kroger. You get so used to where you're supposed to go. And then the next thing you know, you're looking for pretzels, and you're looking at dog food. Yeah, you're, you're like, on all happened? four hoping to get your uh, diet root beer, and all that's there is you know, uh, baby food. And it's just, <laughs> yeah. it's embarrassing. So anyway, yeah. we're walking up and down and we're talking to each other. Okay. Eddie and I okay. are, are having a conversation with each other. We're not asking other people anything. Okay. And Eddie, okay. you're foreshadowing at this point. Yeah. You're Eddie, foreshadowing. Yeah, Eddie yeah. looks at me and he goes, where are the chips? How can we not <laughs> find the chips? And we walked up and down, back and forth. We could not find. Usually the potato chips take up the whole aisle. And yeah. so he looks at me, he says, where are the chips? The woman in front of us turns around, looks at us, almost like we've offended her. She goes, you walked right past them. <laughs> and then she, then she like <sighs> scuffs and turns and walks away. <laughs> and Eddie looks at me and he says, is that going to be your Kroger story of the week? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Here's the crazy thing. The first part of the aisle was baby food. And then the second half of the aisle was potato chips. Who puts well, some baby people... food and potato chips on the same aisle? That some people makes... like to raise their kid on, on potato chips. Well, I mean, it is Tennessee. Yeah. To... <laughs> I mean, where I'm from, it's uh, Mountain Dew and Moon Pie. So, mm -hmm. Oh, God, I love know. that combination. And, and Tudor's Biscuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has been the Kroger Story of the Week. All right, so we're about to wrap this up, but I have to say one more thing. A couple of weeks ago, I'm home, and Cameron, my youngest son, walks up to me, and he says, Dad, Figgy, and that's our rabbit, said, Figgy yeah. bit me on the penis. All right, because that's a story that requires expansion. And I said, yeah. you don't just let that excuse one, excuse me, you don't, you don't just let that one slide and say, okay, well, I'll see you later, bud. That was one of those. And it's like, you know, you're raising your fork to your mouth and then you stop mid, mid raise. Like what? I'm sorry. Yeah. It sounded like you just said figgy bit you on the penis. He says, yeah, the rabbit bit me on the penis. Yeah. So I set my fork down <laughs> and I, I, uh, uh, had my both hands together and I'm, and I'm rubbing them, uh, very concerned. I'm like, how? Yeah. Did you let the rabbit bite yeah. you well, on the well, penis? You don't know what kind of story. How, did, how does this you happen? You don't know what kind of story you're going to be exposed to at this point. You don't know how to conduct yourself. Is this going to be a horror no. story? Is it going to be a story that causes concern? Is it going to be the funniest thing you've ever heard in your life? I know. It's like, you know, where you were you wrestling around and then he got mad and lunged at yeah. you. He, he was laying on the couch with the rabbit on his uh, chest. Okay. The rabbit turned and started walking down Cameron's body. And when he reached the holy area, bang, <laughs> bit him on the penis. The rabbit bit him on the okay. penis. How many times can I say 
bit him on the face. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, one, uh, don't let him do that again. Yeah. And two, let's keep an eye on that and see if you develop any type of weird superpower. Yeah, if he starts craving carrots or something, you don't want to. Exactly. You know. Exactly. <laughs> Good God. Starts tunneling and looking for Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Mike, I, I had a lot of fun tonight. This, our first time recording remotely. Yeah. I hope this turned out. I do too. Um, I hope next week uh, I feel better yeah. and I'm able to join you in uh, Studio B again. Yeah. If not, we'll we'll keep doing this until I'm clear of COVID because, you know, what I've told you for the longest time was, you know, one of the reasons why I wear a mask and why... You know, I went and got my vaccines is because, you know, you and your kids or whatever, I don't want to spread it. And I don't know how I got COVID. I have no idea. Um, uh, I don't know. I have no idea where we got it, where it came from. Did a, did a COVID, but we did got a COVID it. patient bite your penis? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. It's common transmission. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It happens all the time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I wanted to thank everybody for listening. And uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you go to irritabledadcenter.com. Mike has put a boatload of work into our new website. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Leave us a review. And, uh, and hey, come back next week and listen to us on Irritable Dad Syndrome. I know it hurts to say goodbye, but it's time for me to fly. Please tell Kevin Cronin from REO Speedwagon not to sue me, okay? Thanks.